grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The text for today is the epistle lesson, which was just read. They say that being on a sinking ship is one of the most terrifying experiences a human being can have. On sinking ships, mothers have been known to abandon their children. Husbands have been seen leaving their whole families behind. Survivors talk of people biting, kicking, punching, and stabbing just to get to a life raft. Every instinct in us is to preserve ourselves, and when a ship begins to sink, you often encounter those instincts firsthand. Perfectly normal people turn into raving terrors who resemble animals more than humans. This is because death is often right around the corner in a sinking ship. Even if the water isn't frigid, you can still be sucked in by the undertow and dragged to the bottom of whatever body of water you find yourself in. Down there, your lungs will fill up with water. Down there, in the deep, dark waters, is death. And we all instinctively know it. Out in the vast oceans, many people have lost their lives in experience like the one I just described. Many have breathed their final breath as their head and eyes sunk under the waves, never to be seen again. This is what Paul's talking about when he begins describing baptism. He says, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Water brings death, and so does our baptism. Jesus calls it our flesh. Paul calls it the old man or sinful nature. But what it really is, is that deadly, tainted little voice inside our head that tells us that we're not beholden to anyone or anything. It's the fuel behind every selfish decision we make. It's what believes every lie that exits the serpent's tongue, just like our first father and mother did. Did God really say... Ah, who cares anyways? I can do what I want. I make my own decisions. It's this attitude and general disposition that is in every one of us from the time we're born. It's the rotting, zombie heart we were born with. Dead, but still beating. And it is this very thing that's drowned in baptism. For in baptism, we are united with the death of Jesus. The attitude and disposition we were born with is buried with Christ. This is the very reason why God instituted holy baptism in the first place, because of this uniting. When the waters of the font are paired with the words of God, something happens. Our rotting zombie hearts are drowned. Paul describes it like this. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death. And when Paul says death, he means death. Death, the end. Close the curtain. But why? Why is our flesh drowned in the waters of holy baptism? Paul answers us. In order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. You see, water has another side. It's the essence of life itself. We're made up of 70% water. We would only live a few days without it. If you've ever been to a desert before and seen where men have irrigated it, then you know what I'm talking about. Out in this ocean of sand, there'll be life. Green, moist, abundant life when water is added. In the beginning, God created from the waters. He moved on the face of the waters. Without water, every living thing will die. In the morning, when you're wiping the dew or frost from your car, you're coming into direct contact with the waters of this earth. 
waters that birds play in, that cattle and squirrel and deer drink, water that geese land in and fish swim in. All plants and animals depend on it. All human life depends on it. Water brings life, and so does baptism. In our baptism, we are united with the death of Christ in order that we too may walk in newness of life. As Paul says, For if we have been buried with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. This isn't hocus pocus or some kind of rain dance ceremony. Baptism is being united with Jesus Christ in his death and resurrection. Jesus' death and resurrection. Jesus' crucifixion was like something from a horror film. It was a bloodbath, and it was necessary. We were born as evil creatures, and we would have died wholly evil had he not come. But he did come. He came, and he died. It was morbid, repulsive, and shameful. But he did it so that you don't have to. He died. And after three days, his dead eyes flew open. They're still open. After they were open, he commanded his apostles to baptize the Trinitarian name. In this very baptism, he brings you into his church, his body. You are forever joined with him in his death and in his resurrection. Someday your dead eyes are going to fly open. Someday you are going to be raised from the death, and death will have no more dominion over you. In the waters of baptism, this has already begun. We live in our baptism. We die daily. We walk in newness daily. This is Paul's point. He writes, So also you must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. You see, daily our rotting zombie heart is drowned. And daily, we are resurrected. This involves living differently than those around us. There really is a newness. We no longer let sin reign in our body, enslaving us, drawing us away from the new life we now live before God. Sure, we fail. We always will. Like those on a sinking ship, our zombie heart knows that this is the end of it. And it fights back with everything in it, fighting for its survival. But we Christians let it sink down to that deep, dark, and cold abyss that's found in every baptismal font and drown. This happens for us Christians every single day. And we don't remotely think that the new life we've been given in the waters of holy baptism has anything to do with our merit, as if we've somehow earned this ourselves. Jesus earned this new life for us. So we don't stick our chest out and parade around our new life. No, we live humbly and gratefully in our new life. The new life given to us through the waters of holy baptism. The new life earned for us on the cross. Thus, the same water that becomes a grave for our sinful zombie hearts and minds becomes living waters. These living waters are Christ in us. And because of our baptism, Christ begins to flow out of us. What does that look like? It looks like us loving our neighbor as we love ourselves. It looks like being faithful. It looks like us fighting back against our sinful inclinations, not talking behind our neighbor's back, not obeying every feeling or passion that our dead heart desires. It looks like Jesus, because it is Jesus. Just as waters bring to life, so it is with Jesus Christ. 
And he is united with you in your baptism, bringing you to life. The death of our sinful flesh becomes for us a moment of rejoicing. We no longer live as slaves to sin. We now live a new life, a life in the waters of holy baptism. In your baptism, you are dead to sin because you are now alive through Christ Jesus. Amen.